You know, because that, that light is, is being proclaimed, man. Huh. And you can see it. Huh. You can see it. Go ahead, Matthew, Matthew 5. five. I'll start at uh, 14. You said 14? Come, come. 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. That's right. Ye are the light of the world. He's speaking huh. to the Israelites. And the, uh, at this time, the, the disciples, but they come in the spirit of the Israelites. They are Israelites. All right? He says, ye are the light of the world. All right? And a, a city on a hill cannot be hid, man. And where does this, this word is that city on the hill, man? All right? The light of the world. It's shining our light so bright even in this darkness, man. You know? And you, 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 you people are going to understand who the Lord is, man. And who he sends to be his light. In the world of darkness, he has his flashlight beaming. Beaming out, man. And though, it's like a lighthouse. When you have a lighthouse and a, a man is at bay and he can't find his way to sea, to shore, you follow the lighthouse, all right? And the Lord is that lighthouse. The, his word is that lighthouse, sending his people, only directing the one-third of the Israelites directly to that lighthouse. And they are the only ones that can see it. That's the beauty of it. To everybody else, it'll be a dark temple, all right? Go ahead, brother. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, mm -hmm. but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. That's right, man. When you take a candle, you don't put it up under uh, up under the cabinet. You know, you don't, because what is it going to do? It's not going to serve a purpose. So that's that's just like a man taking them talents and putting them in his back pocket. The Lord says, you know what I'm saying, we got to give that light out to the world. All right, so it says put it in the house on a candlestick so everybody can see it. And that's what we're doing out on the highways and the hedges, putting that, this is that candlestick. All right? So you, all of you nations and all of the Israelites, can see the candlestick, all right? But you, to us, to most of these people, we don't look like candlesticks, you know? We look like, uh, we look like, uh, we look like burnt out matches. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't see the light, man. All right? And there's more on that too, brother. It was one, you ready? It was more on that, it's just one more verse. Let your light so shine before men and they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's right. It says, let your light so shine. All right? So we're letting this light. Y'all y'all know this, uh, y'all y'all church, y'all favorite church song. Let this, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Y'all know y'all favorite church. You know what I'm saying? You know, they love that song, man. You know, and, and that's, that, that was, uh, Israel, that's speaking to the Israelites and what they're supposed to be doing. All right? This, and it says, this little light of mine, man. You know, we're all little pieces of a big torch, man. All right? It says, let it so shine so that they may see your good works. All right? We're letting this light shine. And look at this. It says, in season, out of season, man. We don't care about the weather conditions. We still going to come out here. All right? Uh, I know what you're talking about. Um, wow. Let me see. I know it's what you're talking about. It's slips in my mind. But yeah, man, you know, uh, and we can get Matthew 7 and 13 in a minute too, but we can look for that. Um, you know, but yeah, man, we're, we're letting this light shine uh, across the earth. Uh, John 9 and 5. You know, um, this, these are the things that are, that are happening, man. We're letting our light shine, man. We're letting the Lord's commandments we're letting his word shine, man. This is so you can see the good works and the, the, the will of my father. All right? You people are only serving yourselves. You're serving your mothers. You're serving wicked holidays and paganism and Satan and atheism. We're serving the Lord in heaven, man. All right? John 9 and, no, 9 and 2. 9 and 5. John 9 and 5? Okay, come on. Or we John 8 and 12. We're probably talking about John 8 and 12. You know? Uh, we're, we're letting this light shine, and we're not going to stop. We're not going to put it up under a bushel. You know, we're not going to hide our light. We're going to let our light pro be proclaimed. Okay? Because that's a commandment by the Heavenly Father. You can get 8 and 12. All right, which one you want, brother? John 8, verse 12. Then spake Yahweh Shah again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that following who he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Woo! You see that man? The Lord says, I am the light of the world, man. Okay? Who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ is the light of the world, man. You know, but you people are too blind to see that. You you think uh 
you know, oh, this, this so-called dark skin man, he can't be the light of the world. You know, he, he's black. <laughs> he can't be the light of the world, which is also ironic about the color black, though. You know, we say it's voided light, uh, tainted. We know what Esau means by it, but the, actually, the color black is the only color that contains all the colors. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, white is absent of color, but black contains all the colors, man. You know, but they think, oh, this, this black man can't uh, be the light of the world, man. You know, but who you even call Jesus Christ? He's the light of the world, man. Okay? Go ahead, brother. I don't know if you want to read that again, because I know I only got like the first part of it. Come on, come on. You know, uh, so, you know, we, we are proclaiming this light, man. We letting people know, but you people are uh, taking a light, taking your own form of light. People are recreating their, their form of light. They want to say, oh, I want to celebrate Mother's Day, so I'm going to do that. I want to celebrate my birthday, so I'm going to do that. I want to buy Christmas gifts, so I'm going to do that. Instead of listening to the Lord. The Lord says, don't celebrate Christmas. The Lord says, don't celebrate Mother's Day. Uh, let's get Amos 5 and 21. You know, because what happens on, these, on, on Mother's Day, I guarantee you got all these people, not only are they uh, taking their mothers uh, and getting gifts, they're taking them out to eat. You know, it, it, you know people love to eat. So you're going to this gluttonous nation, people love to eat. So they're taking their mothers out to eat. Go ahead, brother. Amos 5, verse 21. I hate and despise your feast days. And I will not smell your solemn assemblies. The Lord says, I your, the Lord says, I hate your feast days, man. And you know, we use this one a lot for Thanksgiving, but today is a feast day. A feast day of the world, man. You know, these people go out and they, they everybody get with their mom together, all of all of the siblings. You know what I'm saying? Hey look, we taking mom out to uh so you know they're gonna go to somewhere. Uh, they gotta go to church first. They gotta right. They gotta go to church first, and then they're gonna go to Red Lobster, Golden Corral. You know what I'm saying? They, you right, brother. They gotta go to church first. Pork you know? chop, shrimp. Uh huh. We gonna crab, get mama lobster for Mother's lobster. Day. Oh, wow. You know they gonna get the ultimate abominable plate, man. Wow. You know they not gonna they not gonna uh you know uh <laughs> you know these people are trip, man. And so it's funny because you know I I talked to my moms and I, uh, I actually went to go visit my mama a few days ago. And you know, but it, that, that was an example right there. You see how the Lord set that up. You know, I just wanted to go see her because I wanted to see her. You know, she's living in another state. I'm like, let me go see my mom. It wasn't for Mother's Day. I didn't say Happy Mother's Day. I didn't bring her nothing. You know what I'm saying? But hey, mama, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I you know, when we, I got her some food, but it wasn't for Mother's Day. It was just because I thought about it. And I was in the area, you know what I'm saying? You know, but that, that don't happen in this world, man. They do the adverse to that. And the Lord like, oh yeah, you're not gonna be around there for Mother's Day. We don't want, the Lord don't want us to get any uh, any confusion. <laughs> he don't want me. He don't want my mother thinking that this was for Mother's Day. Right. You thinking know. That you came and played. Yeah. Nah, nah. Nah. That's not what happened. You know. And uh, <laughs> so that that's how the Lord works, man. You know. Uh, but He says He will not go. Go ahead. Read that again, brother. Amos. Amos five verse twenty one. On. I hate. Hey, y'all Israelites, according to the Bible. Yeah. Jesus Cristo el Negro no blanco. Ahead, uh, Amos 5 verse 21 I hate I despise your feast days I will not smell in your solemn assemblies that's right the Lord says he, he hates your feast days the Lord hates Mother's Day man and he said he won't smell in your solemn assemblies so all of those sacrifices they'll sit there they'll say uh, let's put our hands together and say oh Jesus thank you for bringing us our mother thank you for having mother around today thank you for letting us uh, this meal these, this lobster, shrimp, crab, and pork. Thank you for this. The Lord said he not smelling that, man. And the Lord loves a savory smell of righteousness. You know, so if the Lord says he won't smell in your solemn, solemn assemblies, that means he turned his face away from that and he's rejecting that. All right? Go ahead, brother. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Mm -hmm. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. You see that? So the Lord says he don't want your burnt offerings. He don't want your praises, your worships that y'all given when y'all uh, designate. Because today is not a day to worship the Lord. Today was y'all day to worship your mother. So when you're sending that sacrifice, you're not sending it to the Lord. You're sending it to Satanism. You're sending it to uh, feminism. All right? 
So the Lord says, I will not regard uh, your fat beast. So they'll, they'll go and get, oh, let me, let's get mom this honey baked ham on Mother's Day. You know what I'm saying? Let's get mom this turkey. Let's get mom this uh, big ass pork chop. You know, let us do that on Mother's Day. The Lord says he will not regard your fat beast, man. He don't want, he don't want all of y'all wicked uh, abominations and wicked sacrifices. All right? It's a little bit more on that, brother. Take thou away from me the noise of thy song. Mm -hmm. For I will not hear the melody of thy vow. You see that man? Like they'll be on, they'll be singing. Oh, uh, you know, you know, everybody singing. Uh, hey, mama, you know I love you. You know, everybody singing the Mother's Day songs today, man. Or they singing Dear Mama by Tupac. Wow. You know what I'm saying? They you, sing. You know the, the, the radio stations on black. Oh yeah, God, I, oh, God. Back to back. That's right, man. They they playing them back to back to back with the Mama songs, man. Bro, and I, you know I would hate this day because at my house we have the Haitian radio station on. God. And I hate walking by that radio and hearing how oh oh my mama, oh, mama, I love mama. I'm like, bro, get, get, get yourself together, That's man. Right. And see, that's the reason. You know, y'all celebrate this Mother's Day, but a lot of y'all men are feminine men now, man. You know, y'all were raised by your mothers, so therefore you only love your mothers instead of loving the Lord, man. You know? And we know, we know, we don't, we, would, we don't like to see our mothers working hard, working two, three jobs, yeah. just take care of they them. They're the weaker vessels still. We but, love our mamas, man. But for the most part, that was their decision. That's right. They chose not to be with the man. They chose not to be with their, 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 the father of their children. That's right. That was a personal choice, man. That was a personal choice. Mm -hmm. So you're going to suffer for your personal choice. That's right, man. You working two, three jobs, oh, well, that's on you. They want to do it on their own. Con. You know, they, they, and they want that glory. Con. Instead uh, of giving it to the man, they uh, want that they glory. Want that glory. <laughs> exactly. To say, oh, I did it. I, I was a single mom. I raised them by myself. You was a damn they, fool. Get, that's, right. You was a fool, man. Why not get help that the Lord literally gave you? Con. The Lord, you know what I'm saying? The Lord gave you some uh, help. Because you, you, you would hear stories about how... In the old, in the older days, maybe like in the 60s and the 70s, how the mothers, though they may not have loved their father like that, mm -hmm. you know, the, the father, the, their husbands, but they stayed with them That's for right. the children's sake, for the household's mm -hmm. sake. And it's smart. And it's smart. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's smart, man. And the only, you know what I'm saying? The only real talk. The only situation that you absolutely can't work something, can't work something out, uh, is like if that man is like beating on you and your children. Or doing something with your children. That's the only reason we really should be like, all right, we getting the hell up out of here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Anything else, you need to deal with that for the child, man. You know? Because it's, it's hard to find another good man that's going to help you do that. You know? And even then, when they do find them, a lot of times they don't take that into consideration. You know? You you, you shouldn't have to do it on own, but you, like they said, you want to. But I, I want to get back on that vows real quick. Because we were talking about the, the melodies. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for mm -hmm. I will not hear the melody of thy vow. He said, talk the, he, call, he, he called it noise, man. Huh. <laughs> the Lord said there's noise. So when you huh. when you hear like some loud blabbering or staticky music that you don't want to hear, that's noise, man. And that's how the Lord says with these songs that they sing in the day on Mother's Day, man. Huh. He said, that's noise, man. You don't want everyone to hear no noise. Noise is, is a, a terrible sound in your ear, man. You know, you like when the uh, the, red, the TV starts staticking out of nowhere. That's disturbing. Or you hear like a large, a large siren or something, like, eh, or the fire alarms. That's a noise, man, and you don't like those noises. And that's how the Lord feel about these songs that these people are sacrificing the devils. Uh, so on these on Mother's Day, man. You know, this is a day of uh, worshiping demons, man. You know, and a lot of these women's got demons on them anyway. You know, see, and, see, in, in, in the spirit, I, I want to make this as spiritual as possible. Mm -hmm. The Most High is looking at us like uh, uh, Reggie and Watson and sexual <laughs> chocolate. Right, right, right. That's Why right. ain't nobody clapping when that man was saying? <laughs> right. Why ain't nobody clapping? Uh -huh. I was like, man, they're not even in the right spirit. That's right. But you when know? you come in the right spirit and you sing this song, mm -hmm. it's going to be like, man, you that's know what right. I'm saying? This, this is a lovely song. Right, let's no. get that Matthew 11 and 17. You know, uh, this is a lovely song, man. And it's spiritual because we kind of went through this yesterday, but that's the spirit. You know, this is a lovely song. This is the song that, that the Lord wants to hear, man. He don't want to hear the songs that y'all dedicate to y'all mothers. You know, he want to hear this song. Go ahead, brother. Matthew 11, verse 16. 16? 16, yeah. Come. Come. But, un but where unto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, we have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. 
We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. That's right, man. We have piped unto you, man. We're singing unto you people right now, all right? But you have not danced, all right? Which means you have not hearkened. You have not coming back to the Lord. You have not returned, all right? We're piping, man. We're singing and piping, singing a beautiful melody out here. Like the temptation. Like the hey, we got a groove, we got a step, we got everything. You know what I'm saying? We got the band playing. Come on. We got all of that, man. You know, but you people not hearing that tune, man, because that the, the tune is is selective. It's for only for certain people, and we're gonna get that in a minute too. Uh, but it said, oh, that's you actually wrap up on that. Uh, get Revelation 14. Uh, you know, but it says you you have uh, lamented. And you have not mourned, man. We this book is full of lamentations, mournings, and woe. But you people aren't mourning. You're in the uh, house of mirth. We're in the house of uh, we're in the house of uh, mourning. You're in the house of uh, mirth and feasting right now. Literally, now today is the house of feasting. All right. You people want to just celebrate what feels good to the flesh. All right. We aren't about what feels good to the flesh, man. All right. We 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 do away with the things that are flesh, so we can so the Lord can return unto be the beauties of the spirit. Right. Right. We're, we're mourning. We're singing. The, we're singing the heartbreak. We're singing uh, the 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 thing, our trials. Mm -hmm. You know all the all the things that we're going through. But then there's redemption. Mm -hmm. The Most High is singing. He's he's singing the song to come back. Yep. Come back to His love. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> and see, no, that was beautiful because I'm trying to think like when you think of songs that are like huh. sad. You know huh. what I mean? But they like sound really good. Right. Huh. You know what I'm saying? Huh. You feel that song, man. Huh. You feel that song deep in your spirit. Oh, you know? oh, 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 oh. You Come feel on, that man. song, man. You feel it deep in your spirit. So that and that's how the, how you know this song resonates with us. Huh. Because the all the trials and the tribulations that the Israelites have been through, we can we can resonate with that song. We can resonate with the things that are being sung. Because when you read the scripture, man, you you there's points where the Most High is like pleading to us, like, yo, just come back. Huh. Get yourself together, man. Come back, man, before I destroy you, man. Right. The Lord ain't set us up to be wicked, man. Huh. That's not the purpose he created Israel. Huh. But he had to show us that what we were doing was wrong so that we can serve him fully in this day. All right? And that's what the one-third are going to do. We're going to serve the Lord.